Welcome to the video lesson for section 4.6, Other Functions. We're going to be exploring how to graph secant, cosecant, tangent, and cotangent. Let's get started. When we're trying to graph the cosecant function, we're going to use the reciprocal identity that the cosecant of x is equal to 1 over sine of x. And that's going to allow us to identify x values where the sine of x equals 0 that would identify our vertical asymptotes. Let's go ahead and look at how that affects our properties. Our first property for our domain, we have all real x such that x does not equal k times pi. And that's because if we plug in multiples of pi into sine of x, we would get 0, which is, again, how we get our vertical asymptotes. For our range, it's going to be from negative infinity to negative 1, and then from 1 to infinity. Our period is pi, so the length of the cosecant cycle is pi. And then for our vertical asymptotes, picking back on property number 1, it's going to be x equals k times pi, again, because that's where we would get a 0 in our denominator. When we piece this all together for our graph of the cosecant function, what we see is a lot here. The red portion here represents the sine function. And what we're going to end up doing is using that to help create our cosecant function, which is the green function here. And we can see a couple of our properties in play here. If you look at our first property, at pi, notice that we have a vertical asymptote. At 2 pi, again, we have a vertical asymptote. So that supports property 1 and 4, where it's not part of our domain because it is a vertical asymptote. For your period, we have, again, this portion here, one cycle over cosecant, which is from 0 to pi. Or we have another cycle from pi to 2 pi. So we can see either that upward-facing parabola or downward-facing parabola is our period. And then for your range, we are going from negative infinity all the way up to negative 1. Or we're going from 1 all the way up to positive infinity, ignoring the portion in between because that's our sine function. So we're going to use this to help us graph our cosecant. Again, we'll, we'll look at the sine function, and I'm going to graph that first, and then use that to help us figure out where our cosecant function should end up. For our example here, we're going to identify our a, b, and c values, and then use those to help us graph our sine function first. And then once we have our sine function, we're going to use it to help us sketch the cosecant. So for our function, we have an a value of 3, and we have a c value of negative pi over 2. So if I plug it into my equation, what I'm going to have is x plus pi over 2, and then we'll have y times 3, and that'll help us identify what our new points are going to look like. So for my minimum, it was 3 pi over 2 and negative 1. When I translate it with my formula, what I'm going to end up getting is 2 pi negative 3. For my maximum, it's going to end up being at pi and positive 3. And then for my intercepts, we'll have pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, and 5 pi over 2. And they all are going to have a y value of 0. And then for my period, it's going to stay as 2 pi for the sine function. OK, I'm going to go ahead and graph my sine function now. So if I look at my two points, actually, before I do that, I need to look at my x values. So I have pi and pi over 2, which means I'm going to make each one of my tick marks going to be pi over 2. All right, so for our first point, we have 2 pi negative 3. Then we have pi and positive 3. Pi over 2 and 0. 3 pi over 2, 0. 5 pi over 2 and 0. OK, I can go ahead and connect my dots now. So that's one cycle of our sine function. To take this and translate it into our cosecant function, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a vertical asymptote anywhere where I had an intercept. Because this is going to represent a value of 0 for my sine function, which means my cosecant would be undefined. So I'm going to quickly kind of sketch in these asymptotes. And then when I go to graph my cosecant function, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw an upward or downward facing parabola connecting at the min or the max of my sine function. So I'm going to have one cycle here and then one cycle down here. And I'm just make sure that they approach your vertical asymptotes and you have correctly sketched the cosecant function. So again, just to reiterate, to graph the cosecant, we're going to graph the sine function first. We're going to draw in vertical asymptotes where your intercepts are. And then we're going to sketch the parabola shape for a cosecant in between the, uh, the asymptotes connecting to your minimum or your maximum of your sine function. For the graph of your secant function, we're going to approach this the same way we approach the cosecant. 
using our reciprocal identity, the secant is equal to one over the cosine. And so what that lets us figure out is that any x value where the cosine is equal to zero is gonna give us a vertical asymptote for our secant function. If we look at our properties, we can see that um, ties directly into our domain. So we have all real values where x does not equal a multiple of pi over two, because again, that's where your cosine would have a value of zero. We see that we have the same range, negative infinity to negative one, and then one to infinity, because we're excluding, again, those values of cosine. For our period, again, it has a cycle of pi. And then for our asymptotes, again, they're going to exist where the cosine is equal to zero, which are multiples of pi over two. If we put that all together, we can see we have a similar process. So for the red function, that is the cosine graph. And we use our cosine graph to help us graph our secant. We're going to place our asymptotes at multiples of pi over 2. So we have one at pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, and so on. And then we sketch the cosecant, again, coming up to our maximum square cosine function, or coming up to the minimum square cosine function. All right, let's go ahead and try this. For our example here, we have A, B, C, and D value. So we're going to be applying everything here. For A, we have 1 fourth. For B, we have 2. C is positive pi over 4, and D is going to be positive 2 as well. So we can take that into consideration. Our equation is going to be x minus pi over 4 divided by 2. And then we have y times 1 fourth plus 2. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply this to our first function, our, our first point, our minimum. We have pi minus pi over 2, which is pi over 2, and then you divide that by our b value of 2 to get pi over 4. And then I have negative 1 times 1 fourth, which is negative 1 fourth, plus 2 is going to end up being 1.75. For our maximum, again, we're going to subtract pi over 2 and then divide by 2. So this is going to end up being a negative 5 over 4. And then we have 1 times 1 fourth plus 2, which is 2.25. And then for 2 pi, if you subtract pi over 2, we end up getting 3 pi over 2 divided by 4, which is 3 pi over 4. And then we have the same y value of 2.25. For our intercepts, we're going to subtract pi over 2 and divide by 2. And I end up getting 3 pi over 2 minus 2, which is... 2 pi over 2 divided by 4, which is 2 pi over 4. And then we have 2. For our next intercept, we're going to end up getting 0 and 2. And then for the period for the cosine function, it's going to end up being just pi. OK, I'm going to go ahead and try and sketch this out. And then we'll look at how we use it to get the secant function. In order to do that, though, I want to make each one of my tick marks go by pi over 4. That way, I just have to count for these. So I have 1 pi over 4 and then 1.75, which is right below 2. Then we have negative pi over 4 and 2.25, so just above 2. Uh, we have 3 pi over 4, 2.25. And then we have 2 pi over 4 and 2. And then we have 0 and 2. Okay, so this is a little challenging to sketch this out. Here we have a quick sketch of our cosine. In order to take this and translate it into our secant, we are looking specifically at our intercepts. And I'm going to draw my asymptote going between those. And then if I wanted to sketch one cycle for my secant function, I'm going to draw it in between, coming up, touching. And then I kind of get a half cycle on the outsides because I don't have the other part of my function. But there we have a portion of our secant function. For our tangent function, we're going to be looking at the quotient identity here. And that means that we're going to be identifying sine of x over cosine of x. Because of that, we're going to look at where cosine of x equals 0 to figure out where our vertical asymptotes are. So when we look at our domain, it's going to be all real numbers where x does not equal a multiple of pi over 2. Because again, that's where the cosine would equal 0. Our range is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. The period or cycle of our tangent function is going to be pi. And since our domain is restricted, our vertical asymptotes are going to be exactly at those values that are not considered in the domain. 
which are multiples of pi over 2. When we look at a graph here, we can see we have an asymptote at positive pi over 2. We have an asymptote at negative pi over 2. We're going to kind of sketch a graph in between them, and it crosses through the very middle, which would be at 0. So this would be 1 cycle over tangent function. If we look at our second cycle, we know that the period is pi. So from pi over 2, if I add pi, I get 3 pi over 2, which is my next vertical asymptote. And then I would sketch my function crossing through at the very middle and continuing to go up. Let's go ahead and look at some examples of graphing the tangent function. All right, we're going to go ahead and try and find the period and asymptotes and then sketch the graph of y equals one third tangent of 2x. So to begin with, we want to try and identify the period. The normal period is pi. What we're going to end up doing to find our new period is we're going to take this expression here, 2x. We're going to set it equal to pi. And then if I solve for x, I end up getting my new period, which is going to be pi over 2. We also could just go back to our normal equation of 2 pi divided by b to find a new period. And we again get pi over 2. So that means that the distance between our asymptotes is going to be pi over 2. Our next task then is to go ahead and try and find our asymptotes. To do that, we're going to kind of do the same process here. We take that 2x that we had for our expression, and we set it equal to the first two vertical asymptotes, which are negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. By solving those two equations for x, we end up getting the new equations of our vertical asymptotes, which are going to be negative pi over 4 and positive pi over 4. So again, just to reiterate, we have tangent of 2x. We take that expression. We set it equal to the first two vertical asymptotes for your tangent function. And when you solve for x, you get the new equations for your tangent function. All right, so we now have enough information to go ahead and sketch our function. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and sketch the tangent function here. And what we're going to end up doing is we're going to graph our vertical asymptotes, and we're going to draw the general shape and make sure it crosses halfway in between. So what you can see here is our asymptotes at negative pi over 4 and positive pi over 4. And then we can see it's crossing directly halfway in between. And I do apologize. This should be a negative pi over 8. Those two extra points of negative pi over 8, negative 1 third, and pi over 8 and positive 1 third kind of help us verify we do in fact have the right shape. Again, it's an increasing tangent function, so we're going to go up, cross over halfway through, and continue to go up. If I wanted to graph some more asymptotes, my period is pi over 2. So I would add pi over 2 to pi over 4 to end up getting 3 pi over 4 as my next asymptote. Or I could subtract it from negative pi over 4 to get negative 3 pi over 4 as my next vertical asymptote, and continue to sketch some more cycles for the tangent function. For our next example, we're going to go ahead and graph the tangent of x over 2. First thing we're going to do is identify what our b value is. In this case, your b value is going to be 1 half. We're going to use that to help us identify our period. So your normal period is going to be pi. If I divide that by 1 half, my new period is now going to be 2 pi. So the period is important because it helps us identify the distance between our vertical asymptotes and the cycle for one tangent function. Our next step is to identify our vertical asymptotes. So in order to do that, I'm going to take our expression here, x over 2, and I'm going to set that equal to positive pi over 2 and also negative pi over 2 because those are your first two starting asymptotes for your tangent function. When I solve for x, I end up getting that x is going to equal positive or negative pi. So I know I have two asymptotes, one at positive pi, one at negative pi. I'm going to go ahead and say that my x-axis is going by a distance of pi over 2. So if I want to graph the vertical asymptote at positive pi, it would be here. And if I wanted to extend my axis, I could also graph negative pi. I have a positive tangent function, so I know it's going to be increasing. I know it has to cross through in the very middle, which will end up being at 0. So I'm going to kind of sketch out that shape. If I want to continue to draw more asymptotes, I know the distance between asymptotes is the period. So I would add 2 pi to my asymptotes. Since I have 1 at positive pi, if I added 2 pi, it would again be at 3 pi. If I wanted to sketch that cycle, I just want to make sure that I cross over halfway in between, which would be at 2 pi, and it's increasing, so I would sketch my function like so. One last example here for graphing the tangent function. See if you guys can go ahead and do this one on your own. Identify the period and your two vertical asymptotes to begin with. 
to stretch the cycle for your tangent function. Okay, let's see how you did. Our B value is going to end up being 2, which means for our period, we normally have pi divided by B, and that is your new period. Now, again, that's going to tell us the distance in between our vertical asymptotes. The next step is to try and find your vertical asymptotes. So I'm going to take my expression 2x, and I'm going to set it equal to plus or minus pi over 2. Again, because those are your first two vertical asymptotes for your tangent function. When I end up solving for x, we get positive and negative pi over 4. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make each one of my tick marks pi over 8 because that's half of pi over 4. And if I do that, then that means my next tick mark is going to be at exactly positive pi over 4. So here's my positive pi over 4 asymptote. If I wanted to extend my axis, then I would also have a negative pi over 4. And then if I wanted to graph my function, I would just make sure it crosses over halfway in between. So something like this. If I extend my cycles, I know my distance is going to be pi over 2. So I'm going to go ahead and put my next one at 3 pi over 4. And halfway in between would be at 2 pi over 4. I want to make sure I put that. And then I just draw my sketch. And there's my tangent function. If I had a negative 3 here, then my tangent function would instead of be decreasing. And all I would do is reflect it across the x-axis so it has something that would look more like this. For our cotangent function, it's a reciprocal of our tangent. So what we're going to be looking at when we're trying to figure out our vertical asymptotes is the cosine over sine function, which means that for our x values where sine is equal to 0 is where we're going to have our vertical asymptotes. And that's going to happen for your multiples of pi, so 0, pi, 2 pi, and so on. Our range is, again, negative infinity to infinity. Your period is, again, pi. And your vertical asymptotes, again, will show up where sine equals 0, so at 0, pi, 2 pi, and so on. We can see that one difference here between the cotangent and the tangent is the cotangent is naturally a decreasing function. So it's going to be going down from left to right. If we had a negative cotangent, it would be increasing instead. So we're going to make sure you focus on those properties as well when you're graphing your cotangent. All right, we're going to approach this the same way we approach our tangent function. We're going to start by identifying what our period is. To do that, we have to find b. So in this case, my b is 4. The normal period was pi, so my new period is going to be pi over b, which is just pi over 4. And again, that helps me identify the distance in between my asymptotes. My first asymptote for the cotangent function is going to be 0. My second one is going to be at pi. So what I'm going to do is take 4x and set it equal to the second one, which is pi. And then if I solve for x, then I get that my new vertical asymptote is at positive pi over 4. So we still have that first asymptote at 0. It wasn't going to change when we divided by 4. My next asymptote is going to be at pi over 4. And I'm going to go ahead and say that each tick mark is going to be pi over 8. That way, my next asymptote would be at pi over 4. And again, just to preserve our distance, we know the period is pi over 4. The distance from 0 to pi over 4 is also going to be pi over 4, so I have the right uh, asymptotes. When I go to sketch my function, remember it's decreasing, so I'm going to be going down. If I wanted to add another asymptote, I would add my period, which is pi over 4, to my asymptote of pi over 4, and it would be 2 pi over 4. And I could draw in another cycle of my cotangent function again if I needed to. And there we'd have two cycles of your cotangent. All right, for our last example here, we have two cotangent of x over 2. Again, we're going to approach this the same way we did the other two. We're going to start by identifying b. And to identify b, we look at our expression. b is going to be 1 half. When I divide pi by 1 half, I end up getting 2 pi for my period. And then for my asymptotes, I'm going to do the same thing I did for the last one. I'll take that same expression, x over 2. I'll set it equal to pi, my second asymptote. If I multiply by 2, then I get that x is equal to 2 pi for my second vertical asymptote. Again, the first vertical asymptote of x equals 0 is not going to change. When I graph in my second one of 2 pi, I have my second asymptote. My distance is 2 pi in between my vertical asymptotes. So if I wanted to graph another one, it would be at 4 pi. 
And one thing I forgot to mention, to make this easier for myself, I'm going to make each one of these a distance of pi. So when I go to graph this again, it's a decreasing function. I'm going to be going down, cross over in between. Same thing for my second cycle. And one thing that I haven't actually identified much of is our A value. It does provide a vertical stretch for both tangent and cotangent. I'm not looking so much for you guys to make sure that you have that when you're sketching it. I will mostly want to make sure you have the correct period and the correct vertical asymptotes. And then if it's a positive or negative function, that it has a correct orientation. So don't focus so much on your A value and how that affects the graph. Just make sure you can get the asymptotes and the period and the right orientation. All right, guys, that does it for our notes for this section. Go ahead and get started on the homework, and good luck.